Hello, friends. For those of you who may not know who we are, we are Dallin and Carrie Larson. We founded a company called Monavie in 2005 and spent almost the next 10 years leading that company. Monavie went from zero to nearly a billion dollars in annual revenue in less than five years. I know of no other direct selling company that has ever experienced such a steep growth trajectory. During that process, many lives were blessed, including ours. Two years ago, after it became apparent that we had lost control of the outcome of Monavie for several reasons, including a significant philosophical disagreement with our private equity investors as to the company's culture and who should lead the company, we decided to step away in July of 2014 and agreed to stay out of the industry for two years. We have honored that agreement. The Monavie experience was amazing in nearly every way. We are happy to say that as we sit here today, we have nothing but the fondest of feelings for all who contributed to its success. The last two years have given us the opportunity to spend time with our dads, both of whom passed away last summer within six weeks of each other. We've had time to read, to pray, golf, and spend time with our kids. I've been able to get back on the guitar and play some music with my old high school rock and roll buddies and many other things. When we resigned from Monavie, we shared a video message stating that we didn't know for sure what our future was going to look like. Now, two years later, we have clarity. And today we are grateful to share a portion of our vision with you. In the New Testament, we find the parable of the talents. We're probably all familiar with the story. And the message is that we all have different gifts and talents given us by our Creator, and that instead of burying them, we will be held accountable for how we nurture and multiply those talents. So instead of spending the rest of our days playing golf, fishing, reading, and traveling, we're determined to use whatever gifts and talents we've been entrusted with to serve and bless others. For some reason, even though I don't feel particularly gifted in many areas, Carrie and I seem to have been blessed with the ability to help create culture and companies that allow people to prosper. So we have determined to continue spending our time and passion doing just that. Since 1989, I've helped start and lead companies that created billions of dollars in earnings for distributors and stakeholders. We fully expected Monavie to be our last stop. But everything happens for a reason, and we don't question it. The Lord has said that His ways are not our ways. We've learned that to be so very true in our own lives. And as a result, we look forward. Interestingly, since I was a teenager, the number three has always been my favorite number. And so, after having helped build two very successful companies in direct selling, we've decided to spend the rest of our days in building a third and final company. And its genesis begins today with this message. We're starting this enterprise with the intention of doing good, of being good and wanting to bless others physically, financially, and spiritually. We want to help give roots and wings to individuals and families in an increasingly rudderless world. That's all nothing more and nothing less. I agree with what Carrie's saying. Our absolutes in this venture are simple. They're short and they're clear. There are only three of them, really. First. We have every intention of leading this company until our last breath. This will be the final journey of our lifetimes. In addition, we have no intention of ever selling this company. We are not starting with an exit strategy in mind, but instead to build and leave a legacy. And unlike Monavie, we will maintain more than 50% ownership in the company so that we can steer the ship and the culture in a direction we believe to be in the best interest of our distributors. Second, I've often been introduced as the distributor's CEO, perhaps because I began my career in this industry as a distributor. As a result, I understand how hard it is to build and maintain an organization. So as far as I'm concerned, a distributor can never earn too much income. With this as a driving philosophy, we are going to reward and recognize distributors in a most exceptional manner. And if I may be so bold as to say, better than ever before in direct selling. In every decision we make, we will put the interest of our distributors first and foremost so that you will want this company to be your permanent home as it will be for Carrie and I. Once we unveil our product story, I absolutely believe you will recognize how disruptive it truly is. We will own a story and a significant niche in the marketplace, and it will be powerful. And once we unveil our compensation plan and rewards and recognition program, 
over the next few months, few weeks, you will see more clearly how I value the contribution of distributors and how we have put them first. In today's regulatory environment, the only companies, the only companies that will survive and thrive will be those companies that create a massive and loyal customer base rather than those companies that simply focus on recruiting other distributors. It is indeed a new day in direct selling, and in my view, this is good news, not bad news. There's nothing in the world that we want or need financially, so we're not motivated by money. No amount of money compares to the satisfaction of helping a single mother put food on her table or get her children educated, qualify for a home, or even pay off her mortgage. And no amount of money is worth losing contact in relations with friends you love. No amount of money compares to being able to sit with friends in hospital bed as they finish the race of life. No amount of money compares to the tenderness of traveling with others to help feed and clothe some of God's most needy children. No amount of money compares to the satisfaction of seeing couples and families grow closer together through shared purposes. It's not about the money for us. It's about living a life of significance. Principles, passion, and purpose don't have a price. Third and lastly, Carrie and I are fully committed to each other and our family. Our priorities will remain God first, family second, and business mm -hmm. third. With that said, we will be giving our whole hearts to this venture. Priorities are important, and we believe we've got them in the right order. These foundational principles go a very long way in determining the success or failure in all that we do. This final venture, God willing, will be extraordinary in every way. If we are so fortunate to attract like-minded folks we can lock arms with. By doing so, I am optimistic that our future together will be breathtakingly exhilarating. If you are inclined to join us on this final journey, we're hoping that, together, we can do a lot of small things over the coming years that turn into significant things. And we're ready and excited for the challenge. But having to sit on the sidelines for the last past two years has frankly been the longest two years I've ever experienced outside of losing my son. It seems like it's been a decade. <laughs> Now I'd like to speak directly to our friends who are with us in Monavi. We miss you and will forever be grateful for this amazing chapter in our lives. Trying to explain the Monavi experience to someone who wasn't part of it is impossible. It's like trying to explain a great movie to someone who never saw the movie. Being on stages around the world as folks came forward by the thousands to donate to the Moore Project, those were sacred experiences for all in attendance as were the times we spent in the favelas of Brazil. We are so grateful we were able to provide jobs and opportunity to hundreds of employees as well as an additional stream of income to tens of thousands of distributors in more than 20 countries. We cherish both our relationships and memories gained through Monavi. In all that we do, Carrie and I want to be completely additive and not subtractive. We want to help as many as we can while not hurting others. So if you're earning an income, and if you feel at home with the culture of the company where you are, I'm going to give you the same advice I gave my sister when I left USANA around the year 2000. She had been the top income earner for several years in that company. And as much as I would have loved working with Colette again, and as much as I could have used her leadership as we started Monavi, I counseled her to stay right where she was and continue earning the income she had worked so hard to create. She followed my advice and has gone on to continue earning significant income for her family. So again, if you feel at home where you are and you're already earning an income, my advice is to stay where you are. I've never believed you have to burn down one company to build another. There are around 7 billion people in the world. My guess is that just as Monavi was built with newfound friends, our final venture will be much the same. We give you our word collectively that we will not reach out to a single person in Monavi in hopes of you joining with us. If you choose to join us, it won't be because we called you. We believe that's the honorable thing to do. Now with that said, we'd like to take a few minutes to talk about our plan. I know that some of you expected a message from me the first week of July when my two-year non-compete expired, that we were ready to launch our final venture that week. That's obviously not the case. Over the next several months, we'll be working on the foundational pieces of the company. This means assembling a world-class corporate team, identifying a compelling story and product offering, finalizing the compensation structure, 
and beginning to identify some of our early field leaders. I will, of course, be looking to team up with leaders who are in transition and who have built large organizations in the past. They should have proven leadership skills along with wisdom, people who have proven to be trustworthy, people who can be part of a team, people who can check their ego at the door, and people who love the people business and are looking for an opportunity to build something of significance and stay for the rest of their lives. You know, I've learned in my almost 30 years in this business that past success doesn't guarantee future success. And more importantly, I've learned that someone who didn't necessarily hit a home run with one company can indeed hit a home run with another company. I've learned that it's not one single thing that makes the difference, rather it's the convergence of many factors, including but not limited to the right people, the right message, the right leadership, the right product offering, the right work ethic, good chemistry between corporate and the field, and a myriad of other factors. So my message to you is that regardless of the structure coming out of the gates, leaders will emerge over the coming months, years, and decades based on performance. And rest assured, the only way we were going to get back in this arena one final time and for the rest of our lives was to create something completely disruptive, something that has never been done before. Again, I'm confident that when we unveil both our product story and the way that we will recognize our distributors, you will see an enormous opportunity that lies ahead. I can't tell you the number of people we've run into over the last several years that have said, gosh, I wish we would have gotten involved in the early days of Monavi. Well, guess what? Now is your chance. The pre-launch phase of a company provides a great period of time to begin laying your own successful foundation. Starting now, I would simply get the word out by letting folks know we're starting our final venture. As you spread the word and share this video with others, you could say something like, the founder of Monavi, former Ernst & Young National Entrepreneur of the Year, former CEO of the Year in the state of Utah, a man and his wife who helped create billions in revenue in direct selling are starting their final venture in a few more months. And you can be one of the first people in the world to become part of something special. And you know what, if that doesn't work, you can use the line that convinces everyone. You can say that one of the most loving, kind people in the world is starting a company, and she's allowing her husband and a few others to be part of it. Mm -hmm. Folks, it's about to get really exciting. I hope you're starting to sense what's about to happen. Can you feel it? I told Carrie a few weeks ago that I can feel the energy beginning to percolate. We've been down this path before and know that feeling. It's a feeling of excitement, a little nervousness, the calm before the storm. This video message has not been created to answer all your questions, obviously, but rather mm -hmm. simply to let you know that we are back and we're going to spend the next three to five months determining who we will be partnering with as our pioneering field leaders. In the movie Field of Dreams, Ray Kinsella hears the voice saying, if you build it, they will come. We are going to build it and we believe that people will come. These are the people we are going to spend the rest of our lives with. We're hearing your voices already. We will build it by developing a loyal base of customers who consume our products each and every day. We will build it to stand the test of time. We will build it with humility, with faith, with solid and unwavering principles, and never forget that at the end of our days, we want our lives to be an accumulation of those small acts of goodness that end up leading to great and significant things. And what's most important to us is that we remain grounded, committed to each other and to the Lord, and committed to helping as many people as we can physically, financially, and spiritually. It's important to us that we finish strong and that we keep our word and that we align with the right nonprofit to help the needy of the world. And then when our days, like our dad's, have come to an end, we'll return to the God who gave us life and as we fall into his glorious arms, we'll see him smiling back on us, whispering the words, well done. And that, my friends, is why we choose to enter the arena one last time. We don't promise you millions of dollars. We do promise we will do our very best with the gifts and talents we've been given to bless as many as we can for as long as we can. So if you're at a place in your life where this message resonates with you, we want you to be a part of this new venture with us from the very beginning.
You know, today we drop the pebble in the ocean and we see a small ripple that over the coming years, God willing, and as we are faithful to our word and to each other, will extend around the world. Something significant is born today. So let's get on with it. There are people waiting for us and counting on us. Welcome home. <laughs>